Hello and welcome back here to the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. One Mass Effect 2. And we're continuing onwards. So, if you have been enjoying my playthrough of uh, this so far, please do like and subscribe to the channel. As I do appreciate it very much. And only half our fuel remains. Let's uh, sort that out, shall we? Right, we got a few things and places to go, see, do, that kind of thing. Um, hmm. What should we do? What should we do? I've done all the other side stuff, right? So I've just got all the other main missions. Uh, let's start with a bit of uh, the Firewalker. Yes. Let's start with that. And get that out of the way. Oh, look at this. We've not actually been here. Might as well. All things considered. Considered. <sighs> can I speak today? <coughs> I can cough. Even though I don't have any, like, uh, symptoms of anything. I'm not actually going to do the Saeed thing. I'm actually going to go this way. Project Firewalker. I actually really do like the fact that this is a lovely 60 frames per second. I don't know about the original PC ports. So, like, for the, the original consoles that this came out on, um... Mass Effect 2 was the first one that was, like, on both consoles. Uh, PS3 owners had to wait a bit before they got Mass Effect 1. But, like, on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, I played it originally on the Xbox 360. I'm pretty sure that was just a, a locked um, 30 frames per second. Detected. What I'm trying to say is this is really nice, and I'm... I, I, Played a little bit of the PC version, I'm not entirely sure. How fast, how many frames it was on PC. I appreciate the fact. The ship is safe. We've run into the game ship. Far too often. This ship? Huh. I'm going to stay at the next site with this is going to be the vehicle. I just appreciate like this game. Uh, I absolutely love it. <laughs> love it so much that I cough. Anyways, let's get the vehicle. Right, so the hammerhead this is, your onboard VI. is literally just like an apology thing, I reckon. Not an apology per se, but it was just like the fact that like guided missile system active. They got rid of the the Mako in Mass Effect 2. And there was no vehicle sections, so they're like let's just do this little DLC. Don't like that buzzing sound though when you get something. That sounds a bit detected. off and wrong. Path is now clear. Okay. Oh god, yep, yep. Just 
search around the entire place, see if there's any extra minerals. I don't even know why I'm searching for that kind of stuff, really. Let's get the show on the road. It's like a push and pull thing going on here, where it's like propelling you, and you have to constantly stay on it. I kind of don't think it's supposed to be making that noise. I really don't think it's supposed to be making that noise. Huh. I might have cheated it there. Because it's supposed to go boop, boop, boop. Said it has that horrific. Oh, I hate that noise. Guess we have to go this way. Yeah, they didn't add a vehicle section in uh, the third game. But then again, they only had like two years. Mission objectives completed. Of course we're leaving. Yeah, so... I think there's something even crazier than that, actually, with the, the third game. I'm just readjusting my microphone a little bit here. When it came to the third game, they wanted it out within a year, I think. EA wanted wanted it out a year. Within a year of Mass Effect 2. So Mass Effect 2 came out in the January of um, 2010. And they wanted Mass Effect 3 out in 2011. Uh, very, very, like, fast development time. Um, I would have preferred them just to like um, take the time with it, but I, underst I understand the rush of that because they knew that the next gen consoles were coming out, and they wanted they wanted their game out before that. Now there's more Firewalker stuff. Yes, some over there. Next project overload here and here, right? Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. So they had a time limit. They wanted to have this trilogy out within one console generation. Because that was the whole hook of it. It's just like, hey, you can... um. take your save file from one game to the next seamlessly I'm sure this is all nice resources and stuff but I'm not going for that I'm kind of just running and gunning through the Mass Effect trilogy here I can, I can afford to do that I'm not playing it on, on Insanity Fuel and then go for the next two systems. Go oh, nice. It is kind of soothing. Uh, flying. I, ah, how do I feel about flying the Normandy around? I don't mind it. I prefer just the um, the. Uh, little cursor thing for Mass Effect 1 though, of just cause it, it was like you were actually looking at the map itself, you weren't controlling the ship, you were just using the cartographer to like 
basically get you to your next des destination. And then Joker would deal with like, you know, flying the ship. This is literally me flying the ship here. It's okay. I'm just saying I preferred how they did it in Mass Effect 1. I was talking about vehicles, right? Yeah, and how they didn't have a vehicle in uh, Mass Effect 3. Because they just solely based it on uh, third person shooting missions. Which is pretty much the majority of Mass Effect, but. Yeah, I noted the lack of vehicles. like that buzzing sound whatsoever. Oh yeah, I was talking about Mass Effect 2 to 3, how they wanted it, EA wanted it out within a year. And uh, I might be one of the only guys who prefers like a three year a three year wait between games. It just makes it more like an event, like special. Kinda like how George Lucas had the original Star Wars films uh, and the prequels. Let's just try and get this resource before we get shot by. Extraction complete. Yeah, got it. Eat it. Yeah, so it's just it's just more special if like you don't rush sequels. I understand like Call of Duty and stuff like that because like they have multiple teams, but if like you're trying to get like the one Bioware Edmund Edmonton team to like uh, rush game out every year, it's just not gonna be that great a product. To be fair, I don't know the full story behind that, so it, it could have been Casey and the boys and girls of Bioware were um, very confident to like just get out the sequel really quickly. Who knows? But I, I always kind of just prefer, like, at least a three-year gap in between sequels. That's just my preference. Let's go up this way. And yet, yeah, like, uh, it was originally... Mass Effect 3 was originally supposed to come out, like, the end of 2011. And then it got pushed back to, like, May 2012. And I reckon it's not as polished. Well, it, it, it has better like gameplay and stuff like that, but like just its story and all that lot. This uh, it's really streamlined down that one. And that's also partially because that's probably the EA mandate of like just simplify it for like mass market appeal. This is a very boring conversation I got into. <laughs> It's just me trying to say I don't think Master Effect 3 was as good as the others. But it was better than Andromeda. Uh, I'll give it that much. Andromeda is the game that I 
I went out and bought the uh, the like collector's Dulux edition online for it, and I played it for about two hours. And I was like, I've just wasted my money. And then there was another game from another franchise, um, that good old Fallout 76 that I bought. I'm pretty sure it's better now. I think, it, of course, it's better now. They've worked on it. But I bought that at launch, and I was just like, mm, you know what? All these new modern games, I don't think I really care that much. So I gave uh, Anthem a miss. I think most of my friends would tell me, you're not missing out much. Which is a damn shame. It's hoping the next Mass Effect is uh, not like focused on that whole silly gotta make it multiplayer cooperative experience. Just concentrate on making a good RPG please, by the way. Is that it? We're done here? These missions are just going through the motions. I'm just, I'm just like trying to get on with it and get through it as quick as possible. To be fair, I don't have to do any of this stuff. It's just I'm a stickler for like wanting to like experience all the content that there is in a video game. Especially if like, uh, well, I always put money down on video games. I don't just nick them, but like. Uh, have used half our fuel. Yeah, I want to get that full uh, <sighs> belch out. No, I want to get the full experience, which is kind of ironic because when I get round to Mass Effect 3 on this uh, Legendary Edition playthrough, I'm not going to be playing most of the, the other stuff, I'm just going to be doing the main mission stuff on the basis that I want to get the worst ending possible. And um, well, I think the worst ending possible is the new one they added in with the uh, Citadel DLC. Or the extended cut when you can actually shoot, uh, you know, Ghost Boy, and then the Reapers win and the cycle begins again. Ah. Uh, there's, a, there's a planet we're missing. Where, where is this planet? Yeah, I've been here. In there? So that's... One, two, three, four... But where's this other planet? Oh, it's right there, it's in the asteroid belt. Sneaky little thing. There we go. I like to see that number at 100%. Oh, gee, okay. Um, so what is the two systems in this... this um, Mass Effect cluster. Yeah. I guess it's a nebula cluster, right? You have to be eagle-eyed to see some of the little planets. Yeah, so I really enjoy experience and everything that the game has to offer, but again, when it comes to Mass Effect 3, like, I won't be doing, like, the Omega or Leviathan DLCs solely based on the fact that, like, that game runs on a, a certain kind of, like, um, war resources thing, and the more of those uh, DLCs you do, the more resources you get towards the end game and I want to go in to the end game with the, the least amount of resources possible again I this is the George R. R. Martin run that I'm playing here it's not going to end well for a lot of characters and some characters I've decided to change up a little bit and like not kill off so I was originally going to kill off Caden because I always 
No, 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 no. What, what was I going to say? I was originally going to... Oh, I changed my mind on that, didn't I? Caden's alive. I usually always kill Caden. But this time around, I chose to, like, kill off Ash. I'm going blind again. Is there another planet somewhere? Oh, it's right! Right there, in the middle. To be fair, that is very hard to spot. Anomaly detected. So I was going to kill off Ashley. No, 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 no. What am I trying to say? I'm getting tongue-tied here. I was going to kill off Caden because I always kill off Caden. And then for this run, I'm just like, you know what? I'll kill Ashley off in the first game. Change up a little bit. Although I would prefer to shoot Ashley in like Mass Effect 3. Anyways, I've changed up a little bit for characters here and there. And like uh, Rex, I was originally going to have uh, Ash shoot him. Then I changed my mind. I was just like, you know what? Let's just keep Rex alive until later. And I'm completely sadistic with this playthrough because like I, I've planned out everything all the stuff I need to do so like when I meet Morden when I meet Morden I have to act nice with them around the general phage and just go the general phage was bad because like you have to hype him up or else he can survive Mass Effect 3 you get what I mean I'm a complete sadist I enjoy fact that like all these characters that I love are gonna die and besides I already did like the the perfect like best ending in my opinion in my um, Mass Effect uh, thingy playthrough the you know the thingy playthrough what's the thingy playthrough Max explain to them the thingy playthrough is uh, my legendary playthrough can I speak today? My legendary playthrough of Mass Effect, uh, of the Mass Effect trilogy. I've probably got it on my, uh... <sighs> I'm saying it wrong. The Mass Effect Insanity playthrough on my entire channel. So, that's Mass Effect 1, 2 and 3 on Insanity difficulty. Mineral resources detected. Ooh, just got there. I hate that hideous. It's not supposed to sound like that. I'm pretty sure it doesn't sound like that in the original. There's uh, there's resources down there. Yeah, so I've already done the Paragon playthrough. This is like the Renegade playthrough. Let's put it that way. And hey, in the, uh, t uh, not, just in case you, uh, are into this kind of thing, in the, uh, Paragon playthrough that I did, <laughs> it's actually the full, the, the absolute fullest complete one, so that has Pinnacle Station, way. <laughs> Pinnacle Station is just completely, completely mediocre. No one's going to argue against that, but... Hey, it's a little extra bit that's not in this game. If you're a stickler for those kind of things, for every last piece of content, my Insanity playthrough of the original Mass Effect trilogy that's on my channel for you to watch has uh, Pinnacle Station. And mind you, when I was doing my Insanity playthrough, uh, I did that from scratch. I didn't do uh, a new game plus. I started from level one all the way up. And let me tell you, Pinnacle Station, when I was playing that at the bit that... Extraction complete. So I, I played Pinnacle Station before I do any of the main missions, pretty much. And boy, on the Insanity difficulty, Pinnacle Station is pretty hard. I had to go back and get some mods for the, for the guns to fight, like, synthetics or something like that, I, I recall. It was brutal. Research base entrance ahead. Very good. Extraction complete. Scan the base. 
I mean, this legendary edition is great because it's 60 frames per second and it's just, it's so quick. And, you know what? You don't need Pinnacle Station, it's not vital or anything like that. I just, there's a little bit of me that just finds it a shame because I just want... I'm greedy, I want it all, even the bad stuff. That's just who I am. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Date pad. Anything else in this room? Apparently not. Can bypass that. Can I bypass that? I think I might have to use the terminal. Activate sensors. You know what? I'm just gonna. Ooh, I don't know what to do here. Exactly. Let's just try and bypass this door and see what's in here. If there's any goodies or not. There we go. All this neat stuff to get. Get out of the way, I don't just stand there. Alright, this place is coming down. Okay, get in the Hammerhead, I forgot the name of the vehicle already. <laughs> I'm not gonna remember. I think this might be the only appearance of it, actually. Look at that, the crosshairs uh, basically zoomed in. Yeah, I remember the. Uh, the tremors being absolutely ridiculous. Oh, some research. Nice. Well, resources. Extraction complete. Let's go. Uh oh. Alright, let's go. Let's blast through this. Just one more, and then we've got Project Overload, which... Fuel at one half capacity. Overlord, shall I say. And that has... Uh, Simon Templeman. Simon Templeman is already playing like a, a Quarian general. I can't remember which general he plays, he's just, he's just the badass one. Of course, Simon Templeman is from uh, the Legacy of Kane series. He plays Kane. I think I went to the wrong system, didn't I? 
No, it didn't. There's profane rune right over there. Just mapping out all these planets so I don't have to come <laughs> come back to them. <coughs> but let's face it, I might do. No, I'm not. I'm I'm adamant that I'm not gonna be doing any of that uh planet scanning. I don't care. And Mass Effect 3, totally not, because that adds to your war resources and we're not doing that. Ah, some secret planets. I think I saw one that's right next to the sun, yep, right there. And that would mean that there's a secret planet in the asteroid belt. Up oh, there is, there it was. What would be commonly referred to as a dwarf world. Or dwarf planet, shall I say. God damn. The science community for making Pluto a dwarf. Still the ninth planet in my eyes. And then there's Planet X that we haven't found yet. Or Planet 9, as it's now referred to as. The one that is eluding us, that we can't find yet. Anomaly detected. Oh, it's right over there. Launching probe. I have found something. Come on, gang, let's get this show on the road. Kinetic barrier detected. Kinetic barrier power level. Conventional weapon capability. Recommend disabling power sources. <clears throat> Sniffles. That's what I got. I might actually sneeze again. Oh, oh, oh! Excuse me. Hope you enjoyed that sneezing from me. Because I enjoyed it. Buried it all in the ground. Did you just stop being buried? Let's destroy this. Kinetic barrier strength reduced. Well, pop up pirate. Pop up. There we go. Popping up all over the place. These guys. They are really popping up everywhere. Oh, God damn that annoying droning noise. All right, we need a bit to recharge to boost. Oh, none popped up, really? Oh, there is. There's a few over there, right? Come on. Just stop. Another one. Oh, that point when you have to itch your eyelids. Ugh. Mass Effect, you give me an allergic reaction to this boring mission. Oh, no. Let's just make sure the coast is clear before we start scanning. I really do need to itch my eye again. Oh. Ugh. 
Oh, my apologies. Although I don't really, I'm not really that sorry. I'm not sorry for the human condition <laughs> whatsoever. Everyone experiences it. One more. Let's try over here. Interesting. Do you even. Oh, it's. Yeah, I see. Oh, this is. What is going on with my eyeball? Oh, I'm slowly going off the cliff. Oh. Got <laughs> sniffles. I might have hay fever. <laughs> or a deadly pathogen. Uh. Uh, that's how we achieve world peace. By playing video games. Let's all play Mario Party, y'all. Actually, no. I think the best, um, like, comp competitive game. Uh, uh, take aside, like, you know, your first-person shooters and like Call of Duty and stuff like that. But I think the best one so far is just Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That is just so much fun. Like my friend group, uh, there's only one of. Well, there's two of us actually. There's. Uh, I'm not going to mention names, but like. Uh, two of them are really great. They both have the same name, and. Uh, pff, my brother is a bit better, admittedly. I hate him for it. He's so bloody good at the game. He's usually always the one who wins, most of the time. Although on that last playthrough, he didn't really. Wasn't he wasn't performing as well as he usually did? But it was like a year, probably more than a year since last time we played it. Yes, yeah, so I'm talking about another video game. I was playing Mass Effect. Crazy, isn't it? <gasps> the droning. It is the sphere from that Dustin Hoffman movie that no one watched. Cool. I won't be responsible for another Geth attack, another Eden Prime. I've silenced the Moy. <gasps> nice. It's too late for me. They're still in my head, stealing my thoughts. I can't keep them out. Cool thing, bro. No choice but to destroy this relic. Is this one? Yeah, it's that one. Destroy the relic in yourself, that's pretty badass. Let's examine the relic. It's a good orb. Oh. I think we only have one more Firewalker missions left. And then we're done with them, thank God. And there is the pro Project Overload. Overlord, whatever, who cares. There is that. That will use... One of them? Yeah. Fire, the Geth Incursion, I have to do that one. Then, Project... Overlord. Oh, interesting, I've already been to those. Okay, let's go this way. Ah, oh, it just had to be over here, didn't it? Okay. Here we go. Last one of these. And then we're done. So, uh, Launching probe. I have found something. I'm just, I'm just diving straight into it. 
don't know why it gives me the option to have like crew members because we don't really get out of the vehicle. It's just there, I suppose. Right, the vehicle's constantly going to be Warning. dropping Drawing in temperature. Exposure to extreme temperatures may degrade engine performance. Mission objectives located. Have to be constant on the move. Atmospheric data acquired. Engine temperature stabilizing. Very good! Extraction complete. Caution, engine temperature falling. Not my watch. Actually, yeah, on my watch, it's gonna cool down. Extraction complete. At least they gave like these uh, firewall commissions a bit of variety. They're not exactly the most challenging thing ever, but they, they do have a bit of variation. One more left. Is it at the thing? It'll be at the thing. Warning. Engine temperature below recommended parameters. <gasps> no. You don't say. Extraction complete. That ought to do it. That's enough of those. Now, onwards. Oh, and uh, as as for the DLCs in Mass Effect Three, Citadel is definitely the best one because it's the, it's the nice kind of sure it has like a really shitty uh, like uh, ooh there's a clone shepherd and that's kind of dog shit. Sure, granted. But it's also kind of fun in the sense that it's it's just goofy, so it's like kind of fun. It's like a breath of fresh air compared to the oh my god, the Reapers are destroying all life in the galaxy kind of like you know deal. And uh, the main bit of Citadel though is like uh, hanging out with the crew and like having the house party and stuff like that. My house party is going to be completely empty because everyone's going to be dead. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that that's definitely the best one. I might experience a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah. I probably won't do like, I won't do the stupid mission with the clone because it might actually add to resources and again, not doing that. But like on the whole, the Leviathan and and um, Omega DLCs, they're not that great in comparison to like Mass Effect Freeze DLCs. Dr. Gavin Archer, 
traffic VI breakout. I'll explain the details later, but you must retract that transmission dish. The controls aren't far from your position. You have to hurry. Really? And uh, I presume? Dr. Gavin Archer. This is just me looking for every last bit of resource that I can squeeze out of the game without actually doing it in the planet sky and stuff. Because I, I refuse to do it. Essentially, you need those resources to upgrade your ship, which I'm not doing. And, uh... You also need them to upgrade, like, your, your stats guns, stuff like that. Yep. Go, Dr. Gavin Archer. Got it. Oh, there you are. I've locked myself in a computer room on the far side of the base. There are gears on the loose. A rogue VI program. I've lost a lot of friends today. I'd hate to see you join them. Please watch yourself. Status report. Please inform the elusive man that we've made great strides in our research. His doubts about the lack of progress were warranted. A demonstration is forthcoming. Uh, retract the dish. Memo to all project personnel. I think we have to retract the dish, don't we? Yes. <gasps> Make it stop. Make what stop? Something that I like about Mass Effect 3 over this one is the fact that I can have all my weapons. As a biotic, I'm only limited to uh, machine pistols and pistols. Kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Did she just say Geth? Geth! Give me all your funds. for a guy. Didn't mean to do that. Oh, Miranda. Yeah, I'm not picking her up.
machine pistols kind of suck, don't they? <laughs> That's it. We're done. Nice. I think I might be sticking to the pistol for quite a long, long while. Now. No more ammo to pick up. Oh, what's that? Was there something in there? Yep. Power cells, nice. So. Good fight. I don't think these Cerberus guys are having a good day. Refer to him as he. Dish access. Attention. Satellite broadcast window is opening soon. All upload data will be approved by your department supervisor. Let's stop that. Upload. Say that again. Catastrophic, you said. Everyone's dead. Why are there no railings? to get this out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if they're shooting you, you would take damage. And you'll die trying to lock the door. Especially on like... Uh, Insanity difficulty. We've got close targets. Yep. Get that guy side. Risk it there. Whoa, 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 Sorry, 
What's that thing coming from where? It's a crime. Crime is no joke. Right, good one, guys. Yes, that's it. Oh, where'd we go? Let's save the day. Sucked up an ammo. No heavy, but whatever. You need to destroy the support struts now. They have their own capacitors. Try blowing them up. Like that. It's Daisy's. Prime, that's prime. Oh, shit. Here we go. Please get that guy. Just blast him. The enemy drone is going to hit me like that. Yep. <laughs> this is not good. Take him out. That was close. If you shoot the gas tank, they'll set on fire and explode. Which is alright. You've done it. You've severed the link to the satellite. You've gotta be kidding. Whoa! The whole thing's giving away! reach exceeding his grasp. Come on, I'll explain. You have my thanks, Commander Shepard. You bought us some time, though probably not much. This isn't over yet. Who did you say you were? Dr. Gavin Archer, chief scientist at this facility, and probably the only one left. You owe us that explanation. This is Project Overlord, an attempt to gain influence over the Geth by interfacing a human mind with a VI. The results have been less than satisfactory. It looks like some progress was made. Yes. Even amid chaos, there are lessons to be learned. My brother, David, volunteered to serve as a test subject, but his mind couldn't handle the VI connection. He's like a virus now, infecting our networks and seizing control of any technology he finds. It's why you had to destroy the dish. Imagine if his program got off-world. What's the worst-case scenario? A technological apocalypse. Every machine, every weapon, every computer could be turned against us. If he hit the extranet, who knows where it would end. How does he take control of electronics? This is a hybrid intelligence the likes of which I've never seen. 
I don't know where the man ends and the machine begins. How do we stop him? David, the VI has fortified itself in the main laboratory at Atlas Station. It's in lockdown now. To enter, you need to manually override security from our facilities in the Prometheus and Vulcan stations. How does the lockdown work? It's a fail-safe procedure in the event of an emergency. Normally, all three project leads have to agree to cancel the lockdown. I'm the only one left now. I can give my authorization, but you'll have to manually reset the other two yourself. What happens if I have to kill your brother? Let's just hope it doesn't come to that. What can you tell me about Atlas Station? Atlas Station is the main laboratory where all of our VI experiments take place. It's your final goal once you've overridden the lockdown. It's also where my brother became something else. Tell me about the Vulcan and Prometheus stations. Vulcan Station is our geothermal plant. It generates power for the four outposts. Prometheus Station is a crashed Geth ship full of dormant machines. We use them for our experiments. What happens on this station? This is Hermes Station, our communications uplink with the wider galaxy. If you hadn't destroyed the dish in time, the outcome would have been catastrophic. What went wrong with the experiment? David volunteered to interface with the VI to give it genuine consciousness. Theoretically, it should have been safe, but with artificial intelligence, there's no such thing as safe. Then you shouldn't have attempted it. And what if you've never attempted to find the Reapers, Commander Shepard? Where would the galaxy be then? Sometimes you have to ignore the risks. Tell me more about Project Overlord. We wanted to turn the Geth's religious impulse into a weapon. When we saw them following Saren, we realized they could be swayed. And if a proper figurehead was created, a virus with a face, if you will, the Geth might be controlled. That's an ambitious undertaking. It would be the perfect weapon. Victory without casualties. We could avoid war with the Geth altogether. That was the plan, anyway. I'm heading out now. The other stations are all within driving distance. Best of luck, Commander. Yes, best of luck to you. Uh, driving distance. So I guess we just have to use that door right over there. Okay, so uh, let's call it for now. Um, it's been a decent amount of Mass Effect. Uh, if you have been enjoying my Mass Effect Legendary Edition playthrough, uh, please do a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll be back next time with more of it. Alright, until then, bye!